Joke Song. From 1998, Species 2 does not pick up where the original left off. No, indeed, it does not follow this rat and how it kind of becomes more alien. Nope, none, none of that. Because that wouldn't have sexy Natasha Hintridge in it, would it? Yeah, even though we killed off her character, we're going to find some way to bring her back. So we actually start on Mars. We got this guy, Patrick Ross, I believe. Yeah, first human on Mars. He's a hero. Football star at Yale. <laughs> like, that really is a thing. But uh, he's on Mars, collects a soil sample, and already the movie's falling apart. We see some of the worst CGI and effects up front in this movie. And that'll have you turned off quickly. This was actually a wide release. Released in theaters. I think it was summer, early summer, late spring, 98. But could be mistaken on that. I remember seeing ads for it. What are the soil samples when unthought out contains alien DNA, attacks three astronauts aboard, one of them uh, being Patrick, Michael T. Williams, and some chick. So they all get some DNA containment, similar to what the species set up was, but now it doesn't make a lot of sense. We actually learned from a guy at a mental ward, uh, Peter Boyle. He's over there saying how Mars, what they believe, uh, was wiped out by an alien colony. That could be Earth if we let this stuff go rampant. It's billed as being the same thing as Natasha Hinstridge, but functions differently. There's a seven minute window where these people are out on the spaceship, and then they come to, and it doesn't add up. Because now they don't know they're aliens. They're, they're possessed by the, uh, the symbiote. Is it venom? Is it its own creature? It's kind of like the rules just flip about whenever needed. Fortunately, as we try to figure out this scenario, we have a, a sex quarantine. They're allowed to be out on the town, but they can't have sex for 10 days. Really only a plot point brought up because this movie has a bad script. And you know there's gonna be problems when you have Richard Belzer playing the president. Yeah, so they go out on town. Patrick's converting with, with every female he can. Michael T. Williams, the other gal, don't really notice any symptoms out of them. We come to find out that Michael T. Williams' character is immune. Makes you wonder what was he doing alive on the spaceship? If the creature didn't want him, how come he didn't interfere? How come he didn't kill him? Instead of leaving him as a host, it's because of sickle cell. He carries a sickle cell trait. One of the more clever things about this movie is trying to pull that into existence. It says, look, we know that the, the species, the alien, doesn't want anything to do with people that have these traits. We can use his blood against it. They develop something to attack. At the same time, we bring back Natasha Hinstridge. I'm trying to stay away from people here. That's why I'm turning around so much. Only now she is Eve. Uh, one of those embryos that was put on ice, now nurtured by Mark Helgenberger, carrying a thread from the original movie to nurture her, put her on our side. And so it's kind of like Terminator 2, because now it's like, hey, we've got our own Terminator to fight the bad one, right? Except we don't use it right. She's featured in this movie like she was Bishop in Alien 3, which was fine for Bishop in Alien 3, to be there as sort of a glorified cameo, to have a minor role, but it's not like the movie was called Alien starring Lance Henriksen. Now you got this, essentially the star, the lead, the namesake, the titular character from the original movie is now way on the back burner. So Eve has uh, some fondness for the Dukes of Hazard, pop culture, she paints her nails. This could have been way more interesting than I'm making it sound, to be frank with you. But she doesn't get to do much. She's basically in isolation. Interestingly enough, raised away from men. Gets pretty hot and bothered when she sees Michael Madsen for the first time. Who is back? His, his character is named Preston. He uh, is running some kind of government Blackwater securities thing. They're bringing him in to find the alien. Gonna give him a million dollars. Worth it in 1995, believe me. Yeah, it's like, hey, you've done this before. That's a giant ass spider. I don't know if you guys could see that. <laughs> Eek. Not quite tarantula, but damn close. Yeah, he gets retained with Mark Helgenberger. 
they forget that they had a romance. That's shocking. And this guy Patrick kills his, his fiance, then tries to kill himself. And some of the worst CGI you will ever find. Takes a, a rifle, sh eats the barrel, shoots, blows his head off, and it gets rebuilt in 1998 budget sci-fi. Oh, see this CGI, not good stuff. But you know what? The practical effects in this movie are really quite popping. There's a lot of quality stop motion, puppetry work, all the apparatuses, the cocoons, as he, he mates with different women, they produce a kid, get to put it up in the loft, becomes some kind of oozy cocoon pus fill. It looks pretty good. Uh, when they're giving birth, the, the bellies explode, and all kinds of crazy stuff. Earning our, our rating, right? But um, I could probably actually go this way. <laughs> That's just a lot of people out. You just kind of think there's a lot of missed opportunity here. Patrick is flip-flopping between being aware of what he's doing and not. There's things that don't make sense at all. His blood gets tested. And then I think he kills the scientist testing the blood. Punches him through the wall. Some people probably think his blood formed up to become a fist, but then you see through the wall and it's the alien in full alien form. It's like, what the hell are we doing? The group gets wind of all this stuff, tracks him down, goes to his barn where he's hiding all the kids, because essentially Eve now has telepath abilities and is guiding them remotely. Only she gets a little fed up of being stuck on the sideline, escapes, now hooks up with Patrick, but they still believe she's good. So she's still on our side, I guess, or at least that they're willing to believe that. Tries to fight Patrick. Uh, his alien is big and it's a clunky puppet, but it's probably better than if it was bad CGI. So yeah, it has puppet-like movements. It kind of floats in the air more than it should. Doesn't seem to have a lot of weight to it. Doesn't seem to showcase speed and agility. But it doesn't look too bad. The design's decent. They end up taking him out with uh, like a rake or a hoe that they jam into Michael T. Williams' leg. Bubba Gump's like, go ahead, hit him. They throw that at him. They got like a machete with his blood. And it's able to take him out. I thought that was actually a good way to go about it. I don't know how it killed Eve. Uh, the, the guy can eat a shotgun, head grows back. So a headshot doesn't do it, right? Oh, but if it's the alien's tongue going in her mouth for a couple seconds, she's dead. So now we have to have her carted away in the back of like a Vietnam van truck. And there's but a kid got to escape. How? They burned all this shit down. Doesn't make any sense, movie. She's gonna give birth and then, oh, that's gonna lead to more species movies, right? Not entirely, because from here forward, we're going straight to video. I give species two, kind of surprising two out of four stars. There were things here that I actually liked more than I anticipated. It's kind of weird because the effects are as good as they are bad in the same movie. The story is both interesting and in how it carries on some threads, how it could have made better choices and then kind of fails to do so. Something to think about. Hey, it's Vaughn's mom again. So I just wanted to remind you that instead of buying Vaughn's weird pictures online in various states of undress, you can just bookmark his Amazon affiliate link. And then when you shop, throw it on Amazon, he gets a few pennies here and there.